And what we're seeing now, every day, is this Hunger Games society coming closer and closer and closer because of what's being done in the name of protecting the people. I got news for you. You go deep enough into this system, they don't give a shit about the people. We are being asked to believe now that this system cares about old people. We must protect the old people. We must destroy the world economy to protect the old people. Oh, these would be the old people, would they? That have paid in their entire life through taxation and other means and at the end, in their final years, they get handed a pittance of a pension which gives them the choice between being warm or being hungry. And what does that do? When people are going without essential things because the system doesn't care and, and, and uh, they, they're having to buy shite food because that's all they can afford. They, they can't have nutrients to um, boost their immune systems because they can't afford them and the mainstream and everything's not telling them they need them anyway. And at the same time, they're breathing in shit air, drinking toxic water and other drinks, being deluged with sugar, which has a phenomenally destructive impact on the immune system. All this is going on. We're living in a, uh, an electromagnetic, technologically generated soup of um, radiation toxicity. And this system has allowed that to happen, has allowed corporations to do that. Uh, and now, having done all that, that's devastated the lives and the immune systems of old people. We are being asked to believe that the system cares about the health of the elderly. It doesn't give a shit. So, uh, what are pathogens, whether it's bacteria or virus, there are many varieties of them. One thing is, right now for example, corona. See, it was living in the animals pretty well without killing any of them. Now it jumped onto the human being. And it's still doing the same thing what it was doing in some other animal. But we are not able to withstand and we are collapsing. Well, that also has been clearly established now. Most human beings whose immune systems are good, they are recovering. But those who have a weaker immune system are unfortunately becoming victims of this. What does it say? It simply says that it wants to live, but it lives so aggressively that we may die. Even then, they clearly explain that most of the viruses and bacteria which enter us, who are within us right now, who are in many ways assisting our life process, not harming us, they were at one time could have been very harmful, but they understand if they live like that, they will destroy their own habitat. So they will mutate into something milder over a period of time and then learn to live with us. They were living with other animals comfortably. Other animals survived comfortably with them. They were also… This is the nature of life, that one inside the other, one inside the other, so many life forms, trillions of life forms are all living enmeshed into each other.
This is a time everybody stands up and does something, whatever little positive things we can do in our lives. Because this is not ordinary time. As a generation of people, we have never faced this kind of a situation that people understand this. We have never ever faced this kind of a situation. This is a bigger emergency than the wars you have had in your countries. This is a bigger emergency than anything that you have known. It can pass off without too much disaster if we behave responsibly and do the necessary positive action. This is what I request them also. It doesn't matter even if the size of their brain is that of a bird. Fost profesor universitar, ne? Da. Și ai stat pe catedră și ai... ai predat filozofia? Mm? Da. Și studenții te asculta? Bineînțeles. Bineînțeles. Și la slănit ce ai făcut? Am lucrat în mine. Chiar ai lucrat? Cred că știți foarte bine ce am făcut acolo. Ce ai zis tu așa ca filozof când te-ai trezit cu roaba în mâna, ha? Un universitar la filozofie nu este neapărat un filozof. Dar ce este? Un simplu profesor. Un simplu profesor? Ia ea loc aici. Cât ai stat de acolo? Filozofie sau ai uitat tot? Nu, n-am uitat nimic. Zici și mie două idei. Ce fel de idei? Păi nu zici că ai plătat filozofie și că n-ai uitat nimic? Da. Am două idei filozofice. Filozofice? Da. Două idei filozofice. Cuget de ce există. Ce e asta? O idee filozofică. E a sau e a altuia? Nu, nu este a mea. A cui e? Ce înseamnă asta? Că este foarte sigur că există, din moment ce gândesc. Mare brânz. Este un lucru sigur, o idee filozofică. Cum zic, o idee filozofică? Păi cum adică? Dacă nu gândesc, nu există. Păi uite, grâul ăsta încolțit. Sau un cal, sau un măgar. Nu gândești. Înseamnă că nu există? Nu pot să spun că nu există, dar e foarte sigur că eu exist, din moment ce gândesc.
Dar nici umbre nu puteai să zici că sunt fingă Pe tot pământul nu găseai o fărâmă de lumină O flacă Well, the first straightforward advice is this. We have to maintain our physiology and our health. And so basically I say, well, how do you do that? And I go, you know, it's not that difficult. The number one thing is this. First of all, uh, eat food that is good for you. Not industrial farm, but organic, natural, healthy food. Uh, industrial farm food is loaded with chemicals that influence our system in a very negative way. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is uh, look at a farmer out there in those industrial farms spraying the crops. They're all wearing hazard suits. I go, my God, they're spraying my food and they can't be in the field with the spray because it's toxic and they're putting it on the food. I mean, just there's a, something to think about in that picture right there. So taking care of your nutrition, number one, is important because we nourish ourselves. And if you shorten the supply of nourishment, of course, you're going to be open to sickness. Uh, number two uh, is to take advantage of uh, vitamins and supplements and things to support us because our food isn't that great. Uh, anything we can do uh, outside to enhance our nerve, uh, immune system, uh, let me just add, especially vitamin C, uh, when we support ourselves that way, we strengthen the immune system. And then third thing is <clears throat> watch what you're thinking. Because the moment you are thinking of stressful things like, oh my God, uh, uh, I, I'm not working for weeks and I'm my job, my salary, do I have any money? Uh, fear comes from that. Can I pay the rent? Fear comes from that. Uh, am I going to die? Of course, fear comes from that. And I go, these fears are the primary uh, things that inhibit the function of the immune system. You want to stay well? Uh, Norman Cousins, who healed himself from a lethal disease, uh, heal himself by what? He locked himself in a hotel room and got all kinds of comedies, uh, Marx Brothers and things like that. And what did he do? He just sat there and, and enjoyed life and laughed and did all that. And he overcame a, an illness that should have killed him. This is an example of what is so important. If we do not focus on the problems that they keep throwing at us, and you start to look at your life and say, am I okay? Yeah, I'm pretty good. How's my family? We're good, we're healthy. Even if there's a, a flu, uh, as I said, half the people tested with a flu don't, don't even have symptoms. <laughs> so it's not as lethal as they say. It's the fear of death is the problem that we must deal with today. And the idea is, am I open to die? And I say, everybody's open to die. But will you die from this flu? I go, not necessarily unless you're part of that same group. So let me just emphasize, the group that should be concerned are the aged people, very old, people on uh, support, like nursing support, like especially nursing homes, people whose immune system is already compromised. If you are in that situation, then by all means, do everything to protect yourself. Isolate from those people that may be carrying it. And remember, 
a lot of carriers have no symptoms, so you wouldn't even know they were carrying it. Uh, and follow the guidelines of eating well, vitamin supplements, and thinking in a different way, it, more specifically for that group than for the rest, because that's the group that is primarily affected by this. Then I say, yeah, but there's a lot of respiratory distress, and I go, again, all of that is manageable if you can get hospital care. If you can get a ventilator, if you can get some antiviral drugs and the medical system, people won't die from this if they get care. So basically, it's not, oh my God, I got the flu, I'm gonna die. This is, we've got to change that visual picture because that is the biggest problem uh, affecting us today is the fear. Este un fapt inuitor și copleșitor, este o manifestare a splendorii. Nu se spune că uh, uh, sufletul este nemuritor, ci se spune că sufletul în trup este nemuritor și că la judecata de apoi noi sperăm în recăpătarea trupurilor. Învierea este o înviere în trup, ceea ce înseamnă că splendoarea ultima a lumii este livrată prin intermediul unui trup, a unor simțuri. Suntem fericiți sau avem succes, adâncimea noastră nu progresează. Noi, pro, noi, noi, noi progresăm în profunzimea noastră numai prin suferință și prin eșec. De ce așa? Nu știu. Poate că ține de natura noastră căzută, dar acesta este un adevăr. Noi suntem niște suflete întrupate și că trupul nu este o parte adăugată sufletului ci este forma în care sufletul este prezent în această lume. Fericirea însă și ce este? Fericirea este faptul că mă simt bine după o seară petrecută cu prietenii, după ce am băut un vin bun și un digestiv bun și fumez un trabuc și nu știu ce, sau după ce am văzut un spectacol sau în timpul spectacolului. Și răspunsul este nu. Fericirea este oare starea pe care o am atunci când iubirea mi este întoarsă sau după ce am avut uh, un contact uh, remarcabil cu cineva, nu știu cum, uh, răspunsul este da și nu. Uh, poate, poate da în, 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 în formă, dar nu în conținut. Pentru că ce vreau să spun este că fericirea este de fapt un singur lucru. Este reintegrarea simțurilor paradiziace. Și atunci orice este un conținut pentru paradis. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation and at the solicitation of Japan was still in conversation with its government and its emperor looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. 
In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. But always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us. I believe that I interpret the will of the Congress and of the people when I assert that we will not only defend ourselves to the uttermost, but will make it very certain that this form of treachery shall never again endanger us. that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. We live in a period in which politicians are not very popular and believe me you have my sympathy politicians are regarded as people who have learnt to talk but not to act and you demand action and rightly demand it in dealing with unemployment we live in a period and Britain can only survive by vigor and by action. We have resources of intellect, of energy, of craftsmanship, of skill, second to none in the world. But those resources must be mobilized for a great effort of a united nation. To do that, government and statesmen must take their courage in their hands. Și în drama asta de Comunitatea Europeană nu se facă praf și pulbere. Comunitatea Europeană nu are o filozofie, are o ideologie. Și este o ideologie de tip comunist albastru, adică neomarxistă. Un popor care este creștin ortodox ca noi are instincte extraordinare de alergie vis a -vis de comunism. O comunitate europeană și o cooperativă agricolă care nu are nimic în comun cu Europa adevărată. Care e viitorul unei grădini zoologice cu animale diferite care se sfârșie între ele într-un mod civilizat? Nu confundați Europa clasică, Europa a culturii și a civilizației cu acest construct. Pe la 1936, Nicky Vorcarei îmi spunea vrem o Europa unită cu națiuni diferite și cu un cer comun. s-a retras poporul ăsta când uh, domnitorul era de proastă factură. 
asuprirea internațională era groaznică. Unde, domnule? În bordeiul în familie și în biserică. Oculta internațională s-a prins de lucrul ăsta și el atacă bordeiul, familia și credința. Noi nu mai suntem persoane, noi suntem atom sociali. Ei vor să distrugă rădăcina, etnicitatea noastră. Le e frică de libertate. Le e frică de liber. și în drama asta de Comitetul Europa nu se facă praf și pulbere. Vedeți dumneavoastră noi educatorii, pedagogii, suntem ca niște doctori. Ca niște Stă la căpătâiul bolnavului și așteaptă. Așteaptă până se face bine. Adică să ridică pe picioarele. Că de nu o merlește în și măsii. Avem aici reprezentanți din toate categoriile. Care e ministru? Prezent! Adică a avut funcția asta în fostul regim. Avem miniștri, avem profesori de facultate. Avem ingineri, filosofi, uh, artiști. Toți au venit aici pentru reeducare. Șefu, știi cum se uite la mine? Ca la Dumnezeu. Cum vă uitați mă la mine? Ca la Dumnezeu! Cum? Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, The life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty.
free. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. La Brasho, in Manuela, vedem foarte adesea pe un tip care e cel mai mare nihilist care am cunoscut în viața mea. Uh, îl chema Crăciunel. Crăciunel era brașovean și uh, a făcut teologie ca studiu. Și, natural, uh, nu voia să fie, să fie că nu credea nimic, să un nihilist absolut. Și mi-a spus că hotărâse să, totuși să se iau parosie, mai știu ce, și să căsătorească. Și o oră înainte de a merge la biserică, și-a dat seama că e o absurditate. Că nu vrea căsătorie, că nu crede nimic, mai știu ce, și-a dispărut. Tot lumea era la biserică și l-a așteptat, el a dispărut. Și s-a ascuns o lună de zile. <laughs> Și eu îl vedeam foarte des la, la București, în cafenele, cum se legea, era pe în cuțuțe. Uh, și ăsta, realmente, este cel mai mare uh, nihilist care am cunoscut în viața mea.